and we're going to be talking about box plots. You may have heard it as box and whiskers. They can be called either. So we're going to talk about what it looks like, how to read it, and then how to make one. Um, they're used to kind of show the spread of the data and not necessarily all the specifics, but certain parts. So we'll talk about those parts right now. Um, make sure you are pulling up the Google Slides with this video and filling it in as you go. You do need to insert your work for a few of them and type in your answers, and then you'll finish the practice at the end. So here's what a box plot looks like. Usually there's gonna be a number line at the bottom, but this is a good picture because it shows and talks about the parts. So the first one is the minimum. That's the smallest number in the data set. And then on the complete other send, other end, sorry, is the maximum. So you've got the range actually in this data because you've got the smallest and the highest. And then we have the median, which is the middle number. And then we have the lower quartile and upper quartile. So one thing I like to think about with these is at the median, that's your 50%, okay? So that's your halfway in between your data, okay? So that if that's 50%, the lower quartile is gonna be 25%, upper quartile would be 75%, and then your maximum would be 100%. So think about 25% of your data is between your minimum and your quartile one. Another 25% is between quartile one and quartile two, and then another 25% and so forth. Um, one other thing is this box is 50% of your data in the middle, okay? So you may have a number of a minimum and it's kind of an outlier, a number way out there by itself, but 50% of your data is right there around the median. Another thing you'll need to know is that box is called the, you can find the inner quartile range or the IQR. So when we think about that, think about your upper quartile minus your lower quartile and that'll give you your interquartile range, okay? So we'll find that in a few questions in a minute. So let's look at this graph, this number line and box plot. So the number of eggs laid. So let's say what number represents each part in the box plot. So the median, remember that's gonna be your middle number. So you just bring it straight down, is going to be six, median. The lower quartile is gonna be right here. So we have two and we have four, so halfway between is gonna be three. Upper quartile is gonna be eight. The minimum is gonna be two, and the maximum would be 10. I'm gonna go ahead and add in here for inner quartile range is going to be eight minus three, which is five. So that's the range of the middle part of your data. You could find the range of all the data, which would be eight, but the inner quartile range is five. Make sure you're filling these answers in on slide three on, Google, on the Google slides that were attached to the assignment. One other thing you're gonna need to know is how to analyze them and compare them. So we've got three films, A, B, and C. The title says the age of the film viewer in years. So we're gonna compare them. So which film had the highest median range? Well, remember the medians are right here. So which one had the highest median was film A. Which one had the smallest range? So remember range is your highest minus your lowest. So which one is the high, has, the, has the minimum and the maximum closest together would be Film C, because this is the closest together, the smallest range. The next one had the lower extreme of about 18. So look, we can do lower extreme. Sometimes they'll call it lower extreme or minimum or maximum or upper extreme, so either one. So this one has lower extreme of about 18, is also gonna be Film C. So let's talk about the last one. It says, write a sentence about this statement. Film A has the most viewers. Well, let's look at it. It does have the highest median. It does have the highest range. But how do we know how many numbers are in between? Because really, 25% is between each section. 
right? So they might be the oldest viewers, but it may not necessarily be the most. So write that in a sentence. I would probably say film A, or we don't necessarily know if film A has the most viewers based on this box plot because we don't know how many numbers are in between each section and we don't know how many numbers there are total for each different film because film C could have the same number of people. It just was a smaller age range of people that were watching that film and film A was more spread out. Um, so we don't know necessarily that it had the most, but it did have the biggest range of ages for viewers. So make sure you put that into a complete sentence and add that for the last one. So look at this next one. I started a little bit um, with creating the box plot. Um, I and did the number line part. So the first thing you need to do is put your numbers in order. Because think about we did median already, so we have to find the median. So you have to put your numbers in order. Okay, so here we go. Four, and I always cross them off when I've used them, so I make sure that I have all my numbers. Seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, twelve, twelve, fourteen, fourteen. 15, 16. And then I always double check and make sure I have them all. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 at the top. So let's check the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 at the bottom as well. So remember, the five things we need to find are the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum. Okay, so let's start with our minimum and maximum. That's easy peasy. So our minimum is 4 and our maximum is 16. So the next thing we're gonna do is find the median. So we cross them out. So we have two numbers in the middle, 10 and 12. So what you can do is you can find the mean of those two numbers. So add 10 plus 12 divided by two. Or you can, if you already know that halfway between 10 and 12 is 11, you're good to go. So we're gonna put 11 as our median. I always draw a line for the median because I always wanna remember that it's in between there. If you're doing it and you only have one number in the middle, you're gonna circle that one number and that's your median and you don't have to do anything else with that number. Okay, so here's the next part. We have to find our quartiles. So remember, think about our quartiles. So our median was 50% of our data. We need to now find 25% or halfway on either side. So I always do my X's now, my lines the other direction to make it an X, and then you find the median on the other side. Because there were two numbers in the middle, you have to include both numbers. So watch how I do this. I cross out the four, I cross out the 10. The 10 does get included. If you only have one number in the middle, it does not get included. So I cross here, I cross here, I have eight and nine. If you only have one number on that side, that would be it, don't worry about it. So what's halfway between eight and nine, or add them together and divide by two, we get 8.5. We're gonna do the other direction now, including the 12, or the other quartile. So 14 and 14, so it is just going to be 14. Make sure when you do this, you make it neat and organized. You are about to have to insert a picture of the box plot in this work and an insert a box plot later. You may even on your test have to insert a picture of this. So please, please, please make it neat, make it organized and your box plot. So basically now to actually draw it, I already did my lumber, number line. I always go a little below or a little above. Um, you could have gone up by twos, but because we had an 8.5, I wanted to be more specific. So I went from three to 17. So I went one below my minimum and one below my maximum or my lower extreme and upper extreme. So, I'm, but basically you just put five dots at each number, so four, 8.5 is gonna be halfway between eight and nine. 11, 14, and 16. So your median gets a line. Basically you make your inner quartile range 
and then you have your lines going out to your court, uh, to your minimum and maximum or your upper and lower extremes. And that is how you make a box plot. So again, you always need five things, minimum, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and maximum. Um, and you put the box from your lower quartile to your upper quartile. You could find your interquartile range with that box. Remember, 25% of your data is between four and 8.5, and you can see that down here. Then another 25% is here, another 25%, and another 25%. You can see three in each section. Um, for this one, and our median was 11. Um, you are now going to answer and fill in slide six through nine. On slide nine, you do have to do the same kind of thing like you did on this, where you have to actually put all the numbers in order and make the box plot, actually draw the number line and make it. Um, make sure this box plot gets filled in on slide five and check the key for slide six through nine when you're done. And I hope you enjoyed learning about box plots. This slide, we're talking about the percentage between each section. So the biggest thing I like to think about is between your minimum and your quartile one is 25%. Between your quartile one and your medians, another 25. Median to quartile three is another 25. And then the maximum is another 25. Because think about it as the whole thing is 100% and you're dividing it into quarters or four sections. Also, think about at the median, below that's going to be 50% and above that's going to be 50%. In addition, think about in your interquartile range, which is your lower quartile to your upper quartile, is going to be where 50% of your data is. Okay, so that's huge. 50% of your data is between your two quartiles. So let's answer some questions on the next slide regarding um, some of the percentages. So the first question says, let's get a different colored pen, says what percent of students are between three and seven? So here is three and here is seven. So that is gonna be 25% of our data just because it's between those two numbers, 25% of the data. What percent of students are between 10 and 18? So 10 and 18, that's gonna be two sections, so each are gonna be 25%, so it's gonna be a total of 50%. What percent of students are between seven and 13? Ooh, that's our interquartile range, okay? So again, that's two sections, so again, 50%. So here in this next part, we're going to be talking about actual giving some specific numbers to see if we can, which helps us to then predict how many we're talking about. So it says there's five students between three and seven. So if there's five students between three and seven, that's 25%, okay? But that also means there's five here, five here, and five here, because they're all going to be the same. So how many are between seven and 13, so that's two sections of 25, so that's gonna be 10 students, okay? Here's another question with some different numbers. Let me erase this real quick. It says if there's a total of 14 students between the three sections, 14 students in each section between, a total of 14 students all together, Okay, and then how many do we have between 13 and 18? Well, think about it. If there's 14 total, we're actually gonna change that number to 16. It should say 16 on your slides. So think about if it's 16 total, four in each section, right? So that's four, 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 and four. Sorry about the dog. 16 divided by four sections is four in each one. How many are between 13 and 18 is gonna be four students. Go ahead and fill in the rest of your slides.